Hello and welcome to the channel. This video is second in a multi-part series I'm doing on SIP. Now, last time we talked about SIP call flows and how SDP is sent in the invite message to describe the available media formats, codecs, and protocols that are available in a SIP session. So today we're going to dive a bit deeper into that process. Now in a SIP log you can recognize the SDP portion by the long list of lines that start with uh, first with a character, then an equal sign, and then a value. Now there are three parts to SDP, a session, time, and media. Session will always come first and it's going to start with V equals zero. So that's what you want to sort of scan for uh, to find the beginning of the SDP portion of your SIP log, V equals zero. Okay, so V stands for version, and it's always set to zero because zero is the only version there is. And this O stands for originator. Now it says Tanberg here because I pulled this log from a DX80, and the kernel for the DX80 is based off the Tanberg TC software. The next two numbers after Tanberg refer to the session and version. So in this case, this is the third session, version two. But the numbers here are actually chosen arbitrarily. It's, it's not sequential. So just because it says two doesn't necessarily mean it's the second iteration. And this last bit over here is the endpoints IP address. Okay, S stands for the session name. Now here it's just a dash. So it's not necessarily something that's meaningful, but it's just something that represents the name of the session. Okay, C stands for connection information. And here you'll see the endpoints IP address again. And then B stands for bandwidth, and I believe that uh, this is in kilobits per second. Now the AS abbreviation, this stands for application specific. Now this means that the bandwidth includes the lower layers, for example, TCP, UDP, and IP. You'll also see TIAS. Now this means transport independent application specific. So when you see TIAS, it means that the bandwidth does not include the lower layers. So basically it's just RTP bandwidth only. Okay, so that's session. Now the second portion again is time. Uh, this one's much shorter. Uh, in this case, it's only one line and it's indicated with T equals zero. Now T or time refers to the time of the session. And I know it's kind of weird uh, that it says zero here, but it's supposed to because streams for unicast sessions are created and destroyed through external means. So that should always be zero. Now there could be other attributes here, uh, but in this case, this line is all we have, okay? Now we're getting into the third section, uh, which relates to the media used in the call. And this always begins with M, of course, M for media. Now here it says audio, but it could also say video or uh, application if we're talking about, for example, media sharing. And then after audio, we can see a number and this represents the port address that'll be used to send the media. So we have an IP address already, and then this is the port uh, that'll be used to send, uh, well, in this case, to send the audio. Now this RTP, AVP, now these numbers map to the different codecs that the media can use. So this 107 maps to the first A line here. Uh, A stands for attribute. It maps to the first attribute line for MP4A, which is a type of MPEG-4. Okay, so going back up to 108, now 108 maps to the next RTP map value, uh, which is also in PEG4, but it's at a different bit rate. And you can see that, by the way, by looking at the FMTP attribute. So you'll notice that after every RTP map line, there's a corresponding FMTP attribute that correlates back to the same value, in this case 107. So FMTP is basically, it's a parameter value. So in this case, it's providing information about the bit rate used with this particular MP4 codec. Okay, and then the next number is 114, and that maps to Opus, and then 104 to G.722.1, etc. So all of these numbers, 104, 109, 918, etc., these correspond to all of the codecs available in this media stream. Now this one down here, 101, now this is a reference to something called the telephone event. Now this is used to send uh, DTMF or dual tone multi-frequency tones, uh, basically the touch tone buttons on a phone. So when you're on a call and you're dialing, for example, a pin number, or maybe if you're using auto attendant or something like this, it'll switch to the telephone event. And the reason it does this is because uh, compressed codecs like G.729, they can't uh, transmit touch tones very well they become garbled and uh, indecipherable because they're being compressed. So the telephone event creates a separate stream to send DTMF tones uh, separate from the compressed video stream. 
Okay, but when you start talking again, it'll drop back to use one of these other audio codecs so that it can take full advantage of uh, whatever compression is available. And then notice that the corresponding FMTP attribute includes uh, a number range from 0 to 15. Now this refers to the numerical values on a phone's dial pad. So that would be uh, 0 through 9 uh, plus star, pound, and then A, B, C, and D, 15 altogether. Okay, so here we can see a new media attribute, and this time this one's for video. So we can see the port number, then the list of the five codecs that are available. And if we scroll down a little bit more, uh, we'll see there's another one for application, um, another for video, and so forth. And if we keep going, uh, we can see where SDP stops altogether and the regular SIP messages start again. All right, so that's SDP. I think it's probably a good place for us to pause for now. All right, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching.